In today's episode, we get my old forge up and running, my welding equipment arrives, and I make progress on this UK shop. I'm back here for several months setting up a second workshop to use when my wife and I are here visiting family. Let's get into it. Today's episode is sponsored by Skillshare. Find out how to get a free trial of their premium membership by watching till the end of the episode. The first job of the day was going to go have a look at a Bridgeport mill that was for sale. We got it to power, turned it on, it sounded good, the table was in good condition, and it has a rather luxurious feature of having three axis power feeds. I've always wanted to have power feeds on the knee especially. Came to a deal on it, so we're gonna have that here in the workshop very soon. I know it's nothing, but I have come to absolutely love these wire mesh shelves. I use it as a little rolling stand-up desk, it's kinda cool. Anyway, right now, I'm kind of at this kind of impasse where I don't have any steel to make anything with, I don't have any propane, I don't have any welding gases, I don't have a welder, so my time is largely occupied with making calls and ordering things online and unboxing boxes and it's not very interesting. And what I want to work on now is getting some information on how I'm going to set up my compressed air. I've ordered an air compressor, but I want to work out what's a really fast way of plumbing out this workshop so we can get it done as soon as possible when it arrives. Hello there, how are you? Good, I've got some queries about... Uh... <laughs> So apparently the next hot thing is rigid nylon pipe instead of black iron pipe. I've just got to work out how on earth it goes together. Speak of the devil, the compressor's arrived. No. Ah! There's a nail sticking out of that. That'll do. All right, moment of truth. Woo! That is loud! Yep, it's making air! That thing is loud. Another important thing I've learned over the last few years, especially in the Montana shop, is how important an air compressor is for blowing stuff down, for having some air tools. So I'm happy we've got a good size one in here. And I just finished up placing an order. I managed to find a kit that is gonna get me started well for that nylon tube. And with the joys of next day delivery, that should be here tomorrow, which means by tomorrow, I'll be able to hook up the compressor to the plasma cutter. The welder should arrive. We just had this chop saw arrive. So we'll have a way to cut steel. We'll have this stuff arrived, more on that soon. And I've ordered propane. So tomorrow is the day where we will be able to cut steel. We will be able to heat steel. We will be able to maybe weld steel. Here's a small trick I picked up from Hugh Carnahan, which is to have the whiteboard markers on Velcro. Keeps it all standardized and in one place. The lovely Mr. Steele has been putting together some shelves. Fun little note, I don't actually have a normal tripod. I'm doing all my filming here with this, and I'm now going to use this shelf as a tripod. I'm sure you remember I packed up a crate of tools in the UK, and I shipped that stuff out like four weeks ago on a 10-day transit. It arrived in time, but it's been held up in customs, providing me with some horrible storage fees. Well, the hope is that it gets cleared today, which means that we could have it tomorrow. But I'm still waiting on finding out if it actually gets cleared, if we can actually get the stuff, because it would be nice to have a tripod and, of course, all the other tools that are in there. So. We're going to have propane today, so we'll be able to start forging. But what I also want to do is get casters built onto this forge so that it can be moved around. My welder's still not here, but I can still do something. There we go, these are some relics. This is from that toolbox of tools I pulled out from my father's. This is a hammer eye punch I made with my friend Monty in 2011. This is my third ever forged hammer, also from 2011. Look at that, that is so funny. These are my great-grandfather's pair of tongs. This hot cut did that to my index finger, it made that scar. There we go, this is what I'm after, some fabric. Slide that in, this soft fabric makes up the walls of this forge. I'm not gonna have doors. If I recall correctly, I've just gotta saw this brick in half, and then we get one half here, one half there. We get a little bit of a tight squeeze. There we go, one forge door. More lights arrived. Oh, there we go, gas. We got propane! Woo it's rusted as can be, but it's working. We can heat steel. But as you can see, we have no steel. The delivery we had scheduled for today got moved back to tomorrow, so we can't make anything new. But one thing we can do, just because I'm itching so much to forge something, or 
heat something is straighten this. This is one of my father's crowbars. I'm borrowing it because I'm gonna need it when it comes to moving and positioning any machinery. We're gonna straighten the crowbar. Oh my goodness! <laughs> it's heavy! Oh, oh my goodness gracious! Goodness, no! Holes don't line up. You might be asking yourself, what is this that you keep referring to as an anvil? Well, this is a die anvil. It's a block of mild steel with three shapes on it. It's got a flat face, a large fuller, and a small fuller. This is something my blacksmithing teacher, Bran Brazil, came up with. The intent being to simplify forging by having a really simple anvil so the techniques could be explained with as little confusion as possible. Oh, look at this. My favorite steel supplier is here with welding gases. Oh, look at this thing. Onto a bit of round steel, off the truck. We've done that before. Oxygen. CO2 argon mixed with a MIG weld. Argon for the TIG. From the greatest steel supplier in the world, Eastern Steel Limited in Norwich. The best, the friendliest, the greatest service. Out that end. Let it cool down so we can flip it around and straighten out the rest, but I think more stuff is arriving. Oh, we've got air compressor pipe fittings. And of course, when you smell welding rod, it means there's probably a welder. Here. There's the TIG welder. But here, let me show you the stick welder that arrived. <laughs> this here bad mama jamma will do MIG, stick, and TIG welding. So that's one less machine to take up space. I was hoping we'd get the plasma cutter underneath it. Oh, that would have been lovely. It's just about that much too tall. Who knows, maybe we just cut off that plastic and just slip her in. I, I don't know, that's probably a bad idea. These things are very expensive. Of course, I got the crowbar straightened out. We've got a rather appealing pile of cardboard. All right, we got our first little bit of plumbing done. From the compressor, we go into the nylon pipe, we come out here, and we also come out in the grinding room. I've just ended it right here because I want to build onto it and go way further, so I just did an end to stop the air leaking out. This stuff is pretty cool, the way it works. Inside here, there's a little O-ring and then some like steel teeth. You push the nylon tube in, it seats against the back, and then you pull out, the steel teeth bite in, and it seals from that O-ring. This isn't just normal PEX. This is built for air compressor systems. But the pudding shall be proven when we let air out. And pressurize it. 145 PSI. This is the moment of truth. Ah, which way does it turn? It's very stiff. Come on, ball valve. Why would it be stuck? Oh! 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 That's so terrifying! Oh! Okay, so I guess that's the sound of the pressure making all of these joints extra sealed. These are some pressurized joints. And it doesn't even sound like there's any leakage. And don't worry, I will get a regulator, an air dryer. I have one on the way. It's just not here yet. Let's have a look at this thing. I used to own a mag drill, or at least I was borrowing it. I had a Bailey mag drill. Oh, look at this. This is a new one. The way they work is there is an electromagnet that sticks the drill to your workpiece. So instead of mounting your workpiece, you mount the drill and you move the drill to the workpiece. Looking at the manual, it looks like this thing has through spindle coolant. That's a coolant reservoir. Let's give this a go. So the coolant is meant to be activated when that little uh, pin is depressed. You depress that pin, the coolant flows. What an ingenious design, and it flows through the cutter. Very cool. Let's get that forge on casters. Oh, 
Be sure to hang tight, guys, because tomorrow we have a lathe arriving, and I can't wait to share that with you. Let's thank our sponsor. Today's episode was brought to you with the help of Skillshare. They help make all of this possible, and it's thanks to the amount of you that have gone to Skillshare to learn incredible things. It's an online video learning community with over 25,000 courses in everything imaginable. You can learn how to do watercolor paintings, learn how to start a business, do your accounting, market the business, be productive. You can learn it all on Skillshare. Now we're constantly trying to improve what it is that we do and learn. So this is a course that has been particularly relevant for us, and this is the YouTube Thumbnail Masterclass by the Budgeteers. You'll see Skillshare courses are broken up into chapters. You get to learn within a community and see what other Skillshare users are learning by seeing the student projects others have made. And you can even join in on conversations with your Skillshare teachers. If you've got a little extra downtime this holiday season, it's the perfect time to get on Skillshare because you can get a free trial of their premium membership that's usually just 10 bucks a month by going to my link in the description down below. And signing up for that free trial helps support us while you get full access to their entire catalog of fantastic online courses. Thank you, Skillshare. Bye-bye.